Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to discuss about one of the most important topics uh, that is uh, DevOps with Azure uh, uh, pipelines, Azure DevOps. Uh, DevOps is one of the most uh, popular topics that uh, every uh, full stack developer must have a simple understanding of how the DevOps works. Not necessarily with Azure or any particular uh, DevOps toolkit, but uh, there are a lot of available, but the main intention behind this article, this session is to provide uh, a basic guidelines and basic uh, understanding about how the DevOps works in general. So I just use Azure, where that is uh, easier to set up and which is has a full integration to the Visual Studio, uh, all the services that they provide. Okay, uh, Azure DevOps is their newest uh, service to the uh, Azure Cloud. From Microsoft, it was there from a while as a VSTS, Visual Studio Team Services, and then they have renamed that back to Azure DevOps and created the integration more powerful with uh, a lot of uh, uh, wonderful feature to make the developers' life uh, pretty easier. Okay, so let's go back to the Visual Studio and uh, start a new project. I will choose. Uh, a MVC project in uh, on the .NET framework MVC, and uh, I will give a name DevOps uh, one two three something like that, and then uh, it asks me to choose template, and if I click OK, then it will create my project in the projects folder. Okay, the first thing is uh, creating a simple repository with my file base that I, that I just created. Uh, I am familiar to Bitbucket. Uh, it should not necessarily in the Bitbucket, you can uh, use a GitHub or you can use a, a DevOps inbuilt repos as well in Azure itself. So I'm using Bitbucket from uh, quite a while, so I'm quite familiar with that and I'm uh, working and I'm putting my repository, my file base in the Bitbucket. Uh, let me go back to my projects folder. Uh, I will, yeah, there it is. Okay, um, the first thing is uh, creating a simple Git repository by um, uh, initiating my repo. Okay, it initiated. All good. Um, the second step I what I usually follow is creating a git igno file because uh, there are certain things that we don't need to really uh, add to our repository and it uh, time to time it gives us some trouble so through the git igno file we used to eliminate these files which are not necessarily uh, should be a part of our repo so what I'm going to do is uh, I create a simple text file first uh, and rename is as a git igno txt for now and it the extension should be changed lately and what is most important is the contents in this one so what i'm going to do is i will pick some uh, already existing git igno file and i will copy the contents from that this is the pretty much a template uh, which microsoft uh, uh, which is uh, which can apply for any microsoft project uh, uh, web project and it eliminates uh, it's been already created and put in the stuff to eliminate the unnecessary files like uh, like uh, the this whole folder is it's not needed to the commi committed to our repository so it's uh, the one of the examples uh, let me open this one and put all the contents and save it okay so how uh, I get it the file is contain is pretty much created uh, I will put the link to the this file in the link down below in description to later you can find it from there okay uh, so now we will rename the file uh, to the git igno I will do uh, it through the powershell what I'm going to do is I will type a simple powershell command to uh, txt to dot git igno so i'm saying um, 
uh, rename my gitigno.txt file to space uh, not the space down there and uh, to the gitigno with the extension so um, yeah all good so you can see the it been converted immediately to the gitigno as a second step i'm gonna uh, put all these files to my add all these files to my uh, repo using git add you can see all the files been added to my local repository before i uh, okay i will commit this one as well to my master branch in my local computer uh, with the message say uh, devops demo project uh, first time commit okay quite a long message but it's fine uh, yeah you can see it uh, committed all the files to my local repo and as a second step in the repository what I'm going to do is I will create my remote repository uh, basically my cloud repo in Bitbucket I already logged into my Bitbucket my Bitbucket account from Google Chrome and I will create a new repo in uh, in here uh, let's say DevOps one two three uh, and it will be git private repository and I'm going to create that one in Bitbucket okay just with a few seconds it's created and uh, I copied these couple of commands the first command is basically we set the origin uh, as a uh, origin link to our cloud repository from our local repository and then they these two guys point to each other uh, yeah and the second command is pushing the files to the master branch in hit enter master branch in the in my remote repository okay um, yeah so I will uh, authenticate my account and it will push the files and in the little while once we refresh this one we can see all the source code cover being copied to the remote repository okay cool um, yeah so if you re refresh the page okay cool no, uh, wonderful so it's everything's here as we expect and git igno file also here and it helps you can see the dot vs folder in the local uh, project is now more in the in the remote repository because it's been ignored by git igno file so those are the basics git basics that every developer uh, basically following but today's most important topic is not that uh, today's most important topic is creating a CI CD pipelines from here and first step is completed now let's go to the Azure uh, Azure portal if you type portal.azure.com it will bring you to your Azure account so I already have account uh, in Azure and if you don't have you can create Azure account and obtain a um, free license per one month which has two dollars or uh, two hundred dollars uh, in in the initial account which you can use uh, to pretty much use all the uh, all the uh, services but unfortunately to get that account you must add your credit card information at the time you register to the Azure portal uh, so be careful till if you are, if you feel like you are, you are utilizing more uh, resources always uh, go to subscription and check your balance and make it always uh, below two hundred dollars okay um, I have this one uh, which I obtained my subscription oh, uh, I think I remember my password okay uh, there you go you can see I just log into my portal and all Azure services most of them important things are in front of me okay uh, first things first 
I need to start from creating a resource group in Azure uh, that is exactly same as uh, just assume you are going to buy a mobile package so you need to first buy your mobile package and then you need to subscribe all the services like your data and your uh, uh, SMS notifications or whatever whatever all these services then lately you adding uh, afterwards based on your demand and the requirements so it's the same concept in uh, uh, these cloud services as well you need to first uh, define your resource group all the resources where you gonna group which actually helps you to manage your whole application when the application is getting complex uh, I will give the name as uh, DevOps uh, let's say test or something and then the region is uh, uh, it not really matters i would just say us central but it's based on your requirement like if you are operating your applications uh, based on uh, us or europe or southeast asia or south asia and then you need to pick your region based on that um yeah just create and validation pass and i'm going to create that so my resource group will create uh, this notification and I'm locating to that so in the left hand side you can see all the services and properties uh, to handle and control my resource group okay the second step is Azure App Service Azure App Service is the, uh, the whole resource environment that Azure provide as a platform as a service to create two applications so pretty much every developer uh, basically have understanding about uh, uh, cloud services like infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and a software as a service. So if you go with the infrastructure as a service, then you need to buy your uh, infra and putting all the VMs, virtual machine and configure and the VNets and all the network topologies. So it's uh, quite a bit of a work to, to get to application up and running. And cost-wise, also probably not the best solution because you need resources to manage all these uh, individual uh, services. But the platform as a service, what is the uh, advantage here is they provide all the environment and all the services. You just need to put your package, your files, throw that to the pass, and then it started working. It can be your Node.js application with the full JavaScript stack and it can be your Java application, PHP with the WAM stack, XAM stack, it, it's fine. So Azure just provide environment, uh, whatever it needs to for our applications run and then we just need to throw the files and create our DevOps pipelines to manage the application release control. Okay, so today we're gonna uh, use Microsoft stack with the Microsoft ASP.MVC app and Azure App Service is the pass service, pass service that uh, Azure provide to uh, manage that platform as a service. Uh, let's go here and create a, a new app service. Okay. Uh, I create my membership and resource group as the DevOps test which I just created and a web app name I will use the DevOps123 the same name and um, oh, I already have app with that name maybe Azure test sorry DevOps test oh come on test2 okay Oh, this should be the unique name yes uh, let's say Hussey DevOps test Hussey I don't think okay I'm lucky so it's fine so uh, we are not is really using a docker image to publish uh, it's just a code publish and the runtime stack um, is uh, SP.NET uh, latest version and operating system obviously Windows for now and the yeah, central US is the region same as a resource group so uh, docker i will come to later in some if i have a time uh, in the in the future in one of my sessions uh, docker and the uh, kubernetes is uh, one of the other two services that uh, we really need to know uh, containerization and scaling your web services uh, separately scaling your app 
portion separately is uh, one of the most uh, important concepts and many uh, developers in industry are adapting to that uh, because of the its portable uh, nature and the ability to scale your services based on the demand to uh, and implicitly it helps to uh, helps your pocket as well to save the cost okay um, so I will come to that a little later so today's topic is not really that so I'm going to create my app service first um, yeah there you go okay okay so my app service takes some time obviously it's uh, creating all the background and assigning resources from the background so it takes some time few minutes and uh, not really minutes maybe a couple of minutes uh, you can see these uh, uh, app services are now creating it's still uh, underway I'm uh, just waiting for that okay cool it's all done and I go to resource that means my app service it's same as resource group so left hand side you can see all the properties uh, and uh, here there you go so you can see this URL so this is why it asks the unique URL because it creates this uh, uh, direct unique uh, property it assigned to me as my URL in the cloud so if I right click that and visit the uh, website so you can see uh, it's already up and running but it is the default contents provided by the Microsoft so now what we are going to do is we how we um, how we put our original contents which we push to the git uh, bitbucket repository a while ago uh, to bring it to here okay so to do that I will uh, go to the DevOps uh, Azure DevOps so in here uh, I'm creating my app and the resource group in the portal.azure.com so to access my DevOps I need to go to my DevOps account it is uh, yeah dev.azure.com as I if I'm not wrong yeah so notice the URLs uh, previous one is portal.azure.com and this one is dev.azure.com okay uh, I have my uh, one of my projects created for this uh, one of the demos that I did but uh, in this case you need to first create a project I will give you a project as DevOps uh, 1 2 3 so I'm mixing up my uh, names here <laughs> okay so this one is private uh, and the project will be created in my DevOps account it also takes some time okay cool so you can see uh, in the left hand side it provides repos pipelines uh, and boards so these three components the boards uh, if you are familiar to Jira, Bitbucket or Git uh, Confluence integration in your projects uh, you know the Jira we create a Jira item and then we assign that item to the uh, each and every commit to match the code changes in our code source version control so similar equivalent in the Azure is the boards so Jira equivalent you can create items and boards and backlogs sprints everything and uh, repos is obviously it's equivalent to your uh, uh, github or a bitbucket uh, storage and then the most important thing is the pipelines with pipelines account um, you can see within the pipelines account you have your builds releases uh, libraries task groups and deployment groups so these uh, mostly today I'm going to focus about builds and the releases builds is uh, equivalent to uh, uh, how you it's pretty much same as you right click your your project in Visual Studio and then build your your project in local something like this and using the uh, CI CD pipelines what we are doing is uh, we are assigning a build server through Azure portal which uh, helps 
as a background services to build our project through the Bitbucket code that we uh, that we uh, put in our Bitbucket account it reads the remote repository and then build the whole package in the build server exist in the, uh, the portal and then it creates uh, pipeline release pipelines to uh, uh, put your code the to transfer your code to the production server so that's what it's uh, the whole CI CD uh, 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 concept like each and every developer do a change and then they commit and push the files to a repository and then the build servers pick the change and they build the uh, a repository the code inside the the build server exists in the cloud and then it automatically triggers the build to the release and then that release transfers your code to the uh, uh, production server so that's why it happens it's not very it's not simple as uh, I just explained it there are a lot of concepts like you can just transfer your files directly to the production servers of course you need to create your QA environment UAT environment and then the production environment even okay um, let's go back to our demo and I will create a new pipeline new CI CD pipeline as I put my code in Bitbucket I'm choosing Bitbucket uh, repository Bitbucket connection uh, it want me to authorize my Bitbucket account I will okay I uh, just asked uh, it's just authorized and then this connection established uh, I'm gonna pick my repository which I just put DevOps 123 select and the branch is of course I only have one branch is master branch for this demo and continue okay so since my application is sp.mvc i'm gonna create a build template to say my build server this is the environment that i'm gonna provide okay um, i will I, I i come to this uh, screen and i say i use my uh, new gate build solution I'm not really interested in test assemblies but uh, these other things but uh, artifacts okay uh, once all these things are done then I can save and queue my template uh, I can put some comment like let's say first build okay save and run it is uh, you reading the code now from my remote repository and building the building the project. You can see it takes some time. So build agent is working. Yeah, you will see if you remember the first commit message that I put is right here. This means. Uh, Azure is actually reading my latest commit from Bitbucket repository and they build my application up to this commit message after this this commit it takes some time okay it's all good um, still um, working So we are at the number three the step number three we are creating a ci cd pipelines in azure devops uh, yeah so it reads all the new get packages from uh, from the cloud and that's why it takes time okay okay everything is uh, completed and succeeded uh, I have I think one or two warnings but I don't really care and um, the, so the first step is completed my build is completed and I'm gonna create my release uh, template okay once you come to the release template they 
uh, in the it this is a default uh, release template you need to put your stuff on top of this one so I'm starting from this I click the Thunderbolt here and then I uh, pick my deployment type as a app service deployment uh, stage I don't really care what's the what's the uh, this setting so it's just give a name and the uh, stage owner so it's obviously my user account is assigned here and then in here uh, my task I need to modify when I go to the task deployment task uh, it asks for my Azure subscription uh, account I give the account and then the app type is fine so I need to authorize my subscription account here then only they they display the app service uh, app services side that I have uh, I'm signing from my okay. this authorization uh, steps takes some time So what I see right now? Okay, without any exceptions, it authorized. Then I need to pick my uh, app. Uh, this is the uh, most important thing. I don't, just don't remember what's the name that I put web service. I think it's uh, DevOps Test Hussy. Yeah. Okay. So. I can I'm 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 all I'm all good with this one then I'm gonna save this template uh, not really interested in any comment I save the template cool so I go and view my release uh, wait. Okay, uh, so we have a release template right here and then let's go ahead and create our release. Um, yeah, we already have our artifacts created from our build previously and the name of the uh, pipeline. So I'm not really going to add any description here, just create the release. Okay, um, there it is and go back to your template again and now it's indicate it's not deployed and you can see the additional section is added the artifacts created from our build and then i'm gonna i'm gonna do the manual deploy because i choose when i created my job task it's a manual uh, process uh, let's click that and not doing any comment and just deploy okay so it's in process let's okay it succeeded uh, ideally uh, now our website should be updated uh, if you go back to my uh, devops test has it's earlier it appeared like this and now if I refresh so it's uh, all good so you can see the new website appears right away and uh, I will just navigate to my pages uh, all right so all good okay so today's uh, in this session what we covered is these three topics how to create a simple git repo in uh, in your local and then uh, push the build bucket and then create your first app service is a uh, path service provided by Azure and within app service how you uh, create your CI CD pipelines with an inbuilt Azure pipelines and then put your uh, move your files from your uh, git bitpacker repository directly to the uh, servers okay so as I mentioned earlier so production really should not be easy as this one this is just a demonstration to showcase how powerful the features that Azure provide for the DevOps and uh, when it comes to the reality in the real world industry so you must have at least two or three different environments 
with the same resource plans uh, for the QA and the UAT uh, and then through that you need to create you need to assign your git uh, branches uh, to your uh, environment created in Azure and then those branches you need to trigger accordingly to uh, uh, to do the uh, perfect release all right so that's the end of uh, this video um, I have created a couple of another videos as well in my uh, time to time in in last year in 2018 and early 2019 one is uh, testing JavaScript the other one is uh, creating react Nate, react uh, JS application uh, get started with react uh, application so I have put the links down below in the description as well if you're interested just go ahead and and watch them so uh, my name is Hasita and uh, from Sri Lanka so let's uh, let's meet in another session very soon probably with the docker and kubernetes see you